Hello students, I am Dr. Tanmay Vishrash. I welcome you all in my channel Chemistry the Mystery of Molecules. Today's topic of discussion is in a MC, is a MCQ and the question is in front of you. Four options are provided. I request you student please read the question carefully. Try by yourself and whatever answer you get please write in the comment box along with few words explaining your answer. Okay. Don't worry after some time you will get the right answer with proper explanation. And I request you student try this because self-evaluation is essential for improvement. I believe you have tried so it's my turn to give you the right answer. So please read the problem once more again. So first step is lithium HMDS TMSCL trimethyl chloride. If you look at the lithium HMDS it is a very bulky base and it abstracts proton selectively. And if you look at there are two proton which is significantly acidic you can consider uh, sorry three proton one is this one one is this one and another is alpha of this one now if you compare this thing from the acidity point of view this proton is a tertiary proton okay so bulky or and here also this is tertiary one point Second, if you discuss from the acidity point of view, this HA is more acidic compared to others because this is in between one, this nitrogen carbon double bond and this is a star, means alpha to carbonyl type proton. So that's why HA is the maximum acidic. So reaction starts by abstracting this HA proton and ultimately it generates an carbon ion. Carbon ion means this negative charge here and this is resonance stabilized it can come here and it can come here so in this way what it will produce the negative charge on oxygen and what is TMSCL it is trimethyl silyl chloride silicon chlorine bond and this silicon chlorine bond is not that much stable so consequently this negative charge will attack this silicon and this Cl leaves and ultimately it produces this silic silyl enol ether Silyl because of this, enol because of this and Y ether because this oxygen silicon bond. So these are nothing but you may consider enolate and by the way I have already discussed many lectures on silical enol ether, this enolate and as a enolate. So you may visit for better understanding. Now if you look at this, this part this is enol ether so these are nothing but you may consider some activated alkene why i am saying activated because this lone pair of oxygen could be donated here and it can open so from the, here you can clearly say that that this carbon center is more nucleophilic first of all it is alkene second thing it is electron rich because of the conjugation with this oxygen lone pair third it is nucleophilic so Consequently, what it does, it reacts iodine, which is actually an electrophilic reagent because iodine iodine bond is significantly polar. So, delta plus, delta minus, and they could easily be polarized too. So, consequently, this negative charge here attacks this iodine and it leaves, and ultimately, halogenation, or more specifically, if I say iodination reaction occurs. In the second step, again, KHMDS is given. And by the way, student, if you look at the structure of this base, so cationic part is different lithium HMDS and KHMDS from lithiums and potassium salt but if you look at mainly the organic part which is acting as a base so this part here you can see two very bulky trimethyl silyl groups are there and these bulky groups make them selective for proton abstraction I mean base so that's why what it does in the next step is next step it abstract this proton now you can say that sir in the first step these hexamethyl silyl amide didn't abstracted this proton now in the second step why it's doing first of all right now after iodine formation there is no hydrogen here okay now point there is two competition versus this competition ha versus here you can say competition hb See, if this Hb proton is abstracted by this base, what it will produce? The aromatic moiety that is oxazole derivative could be produced. Okay, we you, and we know that oxazoles are way, means aromatic stable and by the way, I have already discussed many like uh, one lecture on synthesis of oxazole. Now, you may visit for better understanding. Now, so this reaction will happen, the driving force is aromaticity. 
So, this thing we have understood. Now, in the work of stage, why this silicon oxygen bond breaks? Because we know that oxygen silicon bond is very stable. Why? Because of the lone pair of oxygen is delocalized inside the vacant d orbital means i repeat energetically accessible vacant d orbital of silicon so in this case this donation happens and that's why the silicon oxygen bond is stronger means more than a single bond or partial double bond character but if you look at here the bond in this case the donating atom or oxygen is carrying a positive charge a positive charge means you can consider of less electron density means it is electron deficient how it can give its electron to someone else so that's why this silicon bond is not that much stronger and that's why during this workup it undergo hydrolysis and consequently ultimately we get this is the product Okay. So, answer of today's question uh, is that one. Now, what are the key step and name reaction associated? First step is alpha hydrogen abstraction and enolate trapping using a very strong bulky base lithium HMATS. And remember student, this base is so much reactive and pyrophoric. I have done, I have used this base during my research time. I know it. It's a very strong base. Second, halogenation of alkene, more specifically activated alkene to get carbon iodine bond. Third step, it's KHMDS to eliminate the HI hydrogen from here and AI from here. HI and produces is oxazole and in this case aromaticity is the driving force. And finally, silicon oxygen bond was not that much strong because of this positive charge. So, get the stability, it undergoes hydrolysis. So, what is the answer for today's question? Only double bond formation here. So, which option given? In this case, I believe option A. And by the way, you can think that, sir, during the course, there is a bulk NH. What about this? Yes, pro deprotonation may possible. And for that purpose, student, excess amount of base may be needed. So this is the thing. And another thing can say that, sir, during the reaction, there is a silicon chlorine bond. Can this base attack to this silicon center and remove this chlorine? No, student. Because attack on this silicon center is nothing but a nucleophilic attack. And this base is so much bulky that it cannot act as nucleophile. It can act only as base because of this extreme bulkness. And by the way, I have already discussed a lecture on LDA or non-nucleophilic base where you can understand that this base is actually non-nucleophilic base. So that's why it cannot act as a nucleophile. So fine. So if this question is given in your exam less than 30 seconds, how can you explain? First of all, you need to understand that this is a very strong base and TMSCL means it's a silyl ether formation. Now, where from proton abstraction possible the, the from here because it's a maximum acidic. So first, silyl enol ether will be produced and second, iodine will be added to this double bond because the enol ethers are activated species. Now, third step is KHMDS means Later on, KHMDS will react with that, produce this iodine added, added product because aromaticity is the driving force. So, if you look at just here, apply the process of elimination. So, this bond cannot be broken. So, this is gone. Similar way, this is gone. And another thing, double bond isomerization happened. That's not also possible. So, what is left? This is. If you don't know that much chemistry also, you can solve. So, this question is relatively easy, but if you are smart enough and this smartness could be achieved by first study, second practice. So, in conclusion, what do you have learned today? That lithium HMD is a very strong and bulky base. It's a non-nucleophilic base and its selectivity, uh, it selectively deprotonates the alpha hydrogen of a carbonyl. And in this case, we are talking about a star carbonyl. And this enolate could be trapped by silyl enol ether formation. Finally, enol ethers are similar like activated alkene. So, they react more efficiently with electrophilic reagents like iodine. KHMDS is also a very strong and bulky base similar to this lithium HMDS only the cationic part is different and it also abstract proton and for that purpose HI removed and it restores the aromaticity and aromaticity is student a huge stabilization energy. Every molecule tries to attain it. So, this is the end of the discussion. I believe this video may be useful. Please write your opinion in the comment box and if possible, please help this channel to grow if you think this channel is beneficial for you. And I request you please visit my another channel. So, this is the end of the discussion. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.